Hey guys, Edbud here, and today I'm taking an in-depth look into Nike's decision to move from their Lunalon foam into React foam in the midsoles of all of their new shoes. If it's your first time here and you're into running shoes, then you're in the right place. Hit that subscribe button and click the bell for notifications below of when my new videos are launched. And hit that like button, I'd be most appreciative. So many viewers have noticed that Nike are moving away from their Lunalon foam now all of their shoes throughout the whole line, basketball, running, casual shoes, all seem to be utilizing React foam. Hey, they've even put it into the Air Force One. Whoever thought that that would happen? You can actually wear Air Force Ones now and they're actually quite comfortable. <laughs> it does make me laugh. There's so many young folks who wear those and uh, they just can't be that comfortable. That Lunar Lawn change really is wholesale from the Pegasus line through to even the Vomero and it seems like we might get some React Foam also in the Tempo Next Percent. So let's start exploring React Foam, where it came from and where it's headed. So the very first shoe to utilize React Foam in its midsole for Nike was in June 2017. They had lots of boasts that it was much softer than foams they'd utilized before and some of their laboratories had measured a 13% increase in energy return when using React as opposed to the Lunalon foam. Another big thing that they mentioned around that period was that the durability of React foam was going to be far superior to Lunalon. I did find quite a funny piece actually on Nike's website. There's, there's some classic stuff on there sometimes. It's this careful line between publicity and science. They walk this really careful line. They said they'd done some extensive studies where they put about 500 miles into the midsole of a React shoe and then given it to some testers and asked them to comment on how many miles they think the shoe had done. And the average response from those testers was 15 miles. No, I don't know. I've got a pair of my Infinity Run here. I think there's about like 120 miles in those. Now they look like they've done, you know, 50, 60 miles. Just by the toe box alone, you can see that they've done some miles. So I'm not sure about all of that. So the very first Nike shoe to release that used React in the midsole, as part of the midsole, was the Hyperdunk 2017 Flyknit. The basketball player Draymond Green was famous for utilizing those shoes on court. The Hyperdunk had actually been around since 2008, so it wasn't a new shoe, but it does show that Nike are always keen to implement that new midsole material into an older design to give it a bit more longevity. They introduced a React core into the midsole of the Hyperdunk, along with a shank plate to provide a little bit of extra stability. I think that plate was between the foam and the actual outsole. They apparently went through 400 different combinations of the different chemicals to achieve React. It kind of creates images of painstaking testing. People in lab coats discussing the slight differences underfoot, debating the responsiveness of the foam. I don't think they did. They probably bounced eggs on it. Did you see that? They bounced an egg on the Pegasus 37 midsole. I'm gonna try it. I've gotta be honest, when my Pegasus 37s turn up, I'm getting the eggs out, I'm gonna bounce them. I'm gonna see if I can recreate Nike's press video about that one. So within the Hyperdunk, you had a caged React core. So it wasn't full React, it was React kind of in the center, I guess, of the midsole. I think round about that same time, the Jordan Superfly 2017 also used the same React core midsole as per the Hyperdunk. Again, it's that basketball technology, running shoe technology, kind of meeting in the middle somewhere. They often seem to swap over designs and stuff. I do have a pair of the LeBron 17s turning up very soon, the Command Force. <laughs> I couldn't quite stop myself from buying them. But obviously they have the dual air zoom pods in the front. I'm really keen to test them out. And they look pretty fire as well, I think, if you will agree. At least that's what I'm gonna tell my wife. <laughs> so you might be asking when was the first time that React was used within a running shoe? So the Epic React launched in February 2018. That Flyknit upper shoe has now gone through a couple of different iterations. I don't think there were major changes to the outsole in the second iteration. Certainly the midsole seemed to look exactly the same. That line does seem to have been superseded now though by the Nike Infinity Run. There's a lot of React in this one. Though this wasn't the only line of running shoes to utilize React early on. I've read lots of information about the original Zoom Fly here. It does have a Lunalon midsole, 
but there is some information out there to suggest that there's a React core, or at least an early version of React, in the core of the midsole here. It seems as if information changed about it very early on. It didn't mention React at all. And then a little later down the line, Nike did update the information to suggest there might be a React core in here. I've always found this one really snappy, quite a different feeling shoe in fact, to the Zoom Fly Flyknit or the Zoom Fly 3. It's certainly lighter, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Be interesting to know how that React Core changes the feel of the nylon plate inside this shoe. It's a carbon infused nylon plate I believe. The only way to find out is to get the saw out. No, I'm not going to do it to this shoe. I can't bring myself to do it. There's too many people out there that need new running shoes. So I'm not going to go soaring up a pair of perfectly good ones just for that. I just can't do it. If you do have any information about the possible React Core in that shoe, please let me know in the comments below. Oh, what a great shoe. The Zoom Fly Flyknit. This is one of the first shoes, aside from the Epic React, to have a full-length React midsole. It also has a full-length carbon plate. Apparently, it's not the same width as the carbon plate in the Vaporfly 4% Flyknit. I really enjoyed this shoe, got up to about 250 miles in it. The midsole's still feeling really great, though I do think that the React that's in the midsole here is a different formula to the one that's in the Zoom Fly 3. If you can change my mind about that, please do, but I do think that they're different. They feel very different. This React feels far more similar to the one in the Infinity Run. Did take some time to get used to the full length carbon plate in this shoe. After working on my form, working on my mechanics of my running throughout the sort of tail end of 2018, it really was a great doorway into using the Vaporfly 4%. So if we fast forward into 2020, we now have Nike incorporating React into the midsoles of all of their top line shoes. I got the Terra Kyga 5 here from last year. This is one of their two trail shoes alongside the Wild Horse. You've got a full React midsole here, and even a Zoom airbag in the heel. It's incredibly different, actually, the feel to this one. Whether it's because I completely submerged the shoes when doing the Ford Abbey 10K race last year, I don't know. But certainly a really welcome inclusion there to the midsole of a trail shoe. Certainly the most comfortable trail shoe I've worn. Got the Pegasus Turbo 2 here, so you've got React in the bottom section of the midsole and then Zoom X on the top, so a bit of a sandwich. Certainly you get the benefits of both midsole foams within one shoe. And it's ridiculously light, this one. A slightly different implementation of React here in the Infinity Run. There's just masses of it. It almost looks overbalanced in terms of there's just so much here in the midfoot area, but a ridiculously comfortable shoe to wear. It's so cushioned on those easy days when you just think, oh, my legs are hurting, my legs are aching. Perhaps you've done a very long run the day before or some sort of very demanding run. This one's a great shoe to reach for. It's just so comfortable, very forgiving. We've got the Zoom Fly 3, we know all about that one. And the forthcoming Tempo Next Percent as well. That shoe looks like it's gonna use a wedge of React foam in the heel area to increase cushioning perhaps over those longer distances. That one looks like a real mishmash of technologies there. You've got just about everything that Nike have got. You've got Zoom X, you've got React, you've got Air Zoom Pods in the midfoot area of the shoe. And of course, the important carbon plate, you must have one of those if you're gonna release a shoe. It has to have one because everybody else has got one. Always be yourself, people. It does seem as if there's an off-white version of the Tempo Next Percent that's going to launch as well. I'm sorry, because I've just been laughing about this. Bizarrely, the actual image that they've released, or that I found at least, is of the Alpha Fly. So I'm not sure about that. Maybe there'll be an off-white version of the Alpha Fly as well, and an off-white version of the Tempo Next Percent. Either way, there'll be a ridiculous amount of money and I won't be buying either of them. You heard me say it, it's on record, I won't buy either of those. I might buy the normal version of the Tempo Next Percent, but not the other one, it's not a chance. Virgil can keep his strange off-white shoes, they're not for me. I'm very keen to get hold of my Pegasus 37 custom versions. They've apparently been made and they're on their way to me, so we'll be able to test out the latest use of React once they arrive. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video, documenting Nike's change from using Lunalon foam through to React. If you've got any questions, observations, opinions, please place them in the comments below. You know I love to see your comments. I try to respond to every single one that I can. If I do miss you, it's nothing personal. There's just more and more all the time and it's getting a bit tough to do that. But I'll keep going. An Ed Bud video wouldn't be complete without a musical interlude. 
I dug out Neil Young's Unplugged album. I've been chatting with a load of people in the comments recently about uh, Neil Young. I'm a massive fan. I've even got the archive out again, the first series of the archive. There's just so much great stuff on there. But I dug this one out. I really, really do enjoy the Unplugged album, especially Long May You Run and the acoustic version of Transformer Man. That one just is superb. I love the fact that he wrote Transformer Man while he was sort of messing around with a vocoder, while he was trying to communicate with one of his children um, who was born with some severe mental and physical barriers. Neil Young's done masses of work to raise money for different charities associated with such issues. That's not even talking about Farm Aid as well, where he's done loads of Farm Aid concerts and been involved with those to earn money for the farming community in America. So do check it out, Neil Young's Unplugged album. It's a bit rough around the edges here and there, but hey, that's Neil Young for you. Okay, thanks for watching through to the end of the video, guys. Please make sure you hit that subscribe button and click the bell for notifications below of when new videos are launched. Smash that like button for me, it really does help the channel to grow. Make sure you share this video with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you.